The seven billionth person was born in 2011. So we now live on a planet of more than seven billion people. And in fact, if you look at the potential future data, we're looking at the eighth billion, eight billionth person being born around 2026, 2027, around about then. Um, which if you imagine how many people that is and how quickly our population has doubled, then that's quite astounding. Uh, considering that back in uh, ancient times, so in the in in the pre-Christian era, so 8,000 BC before that, it might have taken a million years for the population to double. We had a very, very small population, and now we're looking at less than 30 years for the population to double. So that sort of growth is called exponential growth, uh, which, if you think about exponential growth, uh, it's, it's a doubling uh, growth system, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, etc. So the population will double each time. It makes sense, to be honest with you, if you if you think about it logically, because the more people there are on Earth, the more people there are to have children. So logically, the more children there will be. So consequently, the population grows faster. Uh, so it, it makes logical sense for it to grow in that way. Um, a lot of people are quite fearful of... Um, overpopulation uh, because if we have so many people on earth then they are all vying for the latest technology uh, they're vying for food education different opportunities they, they want to have the same sort of things that you or I want to have uh, from our life so consequently that takes a lot of resources and it puts a lot of pressure on earth to be able to try to think of a way to deal with that um, in general, we're seeing developing countries um, have got quite a, a large growth. So countries in sub-Saharan Africa, um, some parts of South America are seeing rapid growth. Certainly in some parts of Asia, they're seeing rapid growth in their populations. Uh, whereas developed countries like Sweden or uh, Germany or Italy are actually starting to see their population decline slightly because... Uh, of varying reasons which we'll go into but they're starting to see a decline in their population um, you might argue that wouldn't that stabilise the population but remember developing countries are seeing exponential growth in their populations so consequently more and more people are being added uh, to this right it's very important that we have a good grasp of some of the key words in the population dynamics topic uh, so population increase is obviously if the number of births are higher than the number of deaths, then the population will increase. Common sense. Population decrease occurs if the number of deaths uh, are higher than the number of births. Again, that makes sense. Um, if they're equal, then what's called population balance occurs. So if the deaths and births are roughly the same, then you're not going to see a great deal of change. It's going to be quite balanced between the two. Um, Natural increase is the difference between birth and death rates. If birth rates are obviously higher, then you'll get natural increase. If death rates are higher, you'll have a natural decrease. But it is the change between the two. A um, couple of other little quick um, key terms. Birth rate, that's the number of live babies born per thousand population. Uh, and death rate is the number of uh, people who die for every thousand population. Just remember... Um, People per year is often called per capita. Uh, so if it's per capita, it's per uh, person. But for this, it's a thousand people per year. We are going to have a look at three examples uh, of different countries that uh, have, have seen changes in their population. Uh, we're going to look at one country that is balanced in terms of its population, one country that is seeing exponential growth, and one country that is seeing decline in their population. So we'll start off with Senegal. Uh, so Senegal is in West Africa, uh, and as you can see from the statistics, its birth rate 36.73 per thousand, death rate 9.26, so that means its natural increase 27.47 per thousand, which is considerable. So you can imagine that their population is growing uh, quite a rate. This this map here was taken uh, from Creative Commons on Wikipedia. Uh, so this is just a look at different countries and um, their rates of natural increase. So we've we've got, as you'd notice, 
Africa and particularly sub-Saharan Africa uh, are seeing exponential growth in their populations, whilst the Northern Hemisphere, Canada's here, United States, uh, the UK, France, Spain, Portugal uh, and the Scandinavian countries, so Norway, Sweden and Finland, are not seeing growth at the same rate. And as I've said, some are actually seeing decline in, in many ways. Um, so if you look at where the growth is concentrated, it tends to be concentrated in sub-Saharan Africa and through this Asian band here uh, and parts of South America, Central and South America. So you've got a range of uh, countries that you can, you can use there. Denmark is a stable country. Um, the birth rate and death rate are fairly similar and the natural increase, it's so insignificant that the population is stable. It remains stable throughout. Uh, so Denmark, Northern Europe, if you think about what we know about Denmark, it is a high-income country. Uh, it does have quite a range of um, economic activities uh, it has got a stable government. Um, so in terms of its political uh, level, it is a stable Northern European country. Um, good economic growth, a good education system, good health care. All this leads to having a fairly stable population with a birth rate and death rate that are, are similar. Japan, however, are seeing their population declines slightly. Their birth rate is lower than their death rate, and as their birth rate is lower than their death rate, um, they are seeing a decrease in their population. So it's um, not, a, a, not a significant decrease. If you imagine how much Senegal's population was increasing, Japan's is not decreasing at the same rate, not even close. We're looking at perhaps um, for every 2,000 people living in Japan, one person was lost. Uh, I don't mean literally lost, but metaphorically lost from the population year on year. There are a number of factors that will influence the birth rate and the death rate. Again, these maps are taken from Creative Commons on Wikipedia. Um, level of development will obviously have a difference in both the birth rate and the death rate. As you can see here, the birth rate in Africa, particularly Sub-Saharan Africa, is high. The death rate is also quite high in that part of, in that part of sub-Saharan Africa. So the, the example we often use, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo here, if you look at the birth rate and the death rate compared to their charts, uh, it is high birth rate and a relatively high death rate. Development levels mean that there is poor quality medical care in many parts of sub-Saharan Africa. Um, there are lots of charitable organisations, Médecins Sans Frontières, for example, that will provide um, care. And then there's a recent charity that uh, I've seen that looks at, at uh, supplying midwives abroad. Um, but nevertheless, the general uh, feel is that the birth rate and the death rate tend to stay relatively high because of a lack of development. Um, there are some ideas of religious views as far as that's concerned as well. Uh, if you think about some of the religious religious views that are looking at a lack of contraception. For example, the attitudes towards contraception may vary from country to country, so that will have an impact on the birth rate. Uh, if, if the attitude towards contraception is that it's not something that they should, people should use, uh, then that is obviously going to have an impact on the birth rate. Um, also, government policies, they're going to have an impact as well. Sometimes we have pro-natalist policies where people are actively trying to encourage um, or governments actively try to encourage their citizens to have children. Um, and sometimes there are anti-natalist policies where governments will actively try to encourage their citizens to have less children. Uh, so those are all factors that have an impact on population change. Okay.